So we getting into this. First of all, self check. How are we feeling today? How everybody feeling? Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody okay. good? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. good, good, good. I'm a little tired, but yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, as Jeff Henderson used to say, uh, uh, good, great, wonderful, super great, super wonderful. great, wonderful, getting better every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a, we had the transition uh, effective January of last year. Mm -hmm. That was a um, that was a big announcement when it was made for the past year. Um, how is how has it kind of been for for both of y'all just kind of going through this transition from pastor to pastor emeritus and from assistant pastor to to past head pastor leading pastor? No, uh, it's been a been a, a, a great year, a, a good a great time. I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it. It's been good. It, uh, went without any hitch. Everything went smooth. Congregation was good. Uh, 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 you know, we're really happy with the way things are going. And I'm happy. My wife is happy. And then Mama happy. Everybody ought to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This definitely has been a has been a very uh, a blessed year. Uh, it's been filled with both challenges as well as a lot to celebrate. Um, God has been gracious to us, and I I agree with with Bishop that the transition has been very smooth, and we're grateful that it's evident that the hand of God has has been involved in this and has been upon this transition. And I'm thankful. It has been a great year. The congregation has been overwhelmingly receptive and embracing the vision and the direction that we're going in, and so. Uh, I'm excited about where we're going. Um, as you said, it's been a year. Uh, we're a year into it now, and um, I say full speed ahead. God's blessing, and we're going to continue to to seek Him and do His will. So I want to talk. I want to talk to you, Papa. First of all, yes. Um, Thirty plus years, you you've been the, the the leader. You've been, you know, operating in the position as head pastor. You've been the one that's been, uh, you know, officiating funerals, doing the weddings. You've been going to this different district meeting this i mean use a district elder for a little while district bishop for a little while now you got a lot more time on your hands you got a lot more uh i guess free time so to speak what you've been doing with that time since that switch has, has kind of taken place well i've really been in, i've been enjoying this the time that has passed it came not as you know uh, so sudden because i had some time i had you know time uh, i was thinking about ahead of time made some mental preparations about things of how it's going to be, what's going to take place. And because of, you know, Eric coming in as, as, as from sister pastor to pastor, it, it, it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a hardship, a hard thing because we are, you know, we've been communicating for so many years and he knows the ministry well. So I'm still doing things, but I'm not pastoring. So it's it's great. This this is a smooth transition, as we said earlier. Things are moving along great. The congregation is great. Is moving along with us, and we are just enjoying the trip. It's a blessing because the Lord truly blessed to have Eric here as a as executive administrator. Then became the assistant pastor, and the things that we he was doing since he began became assistant pastor that I used to do. And now he, he, he did, he was doing, he's doing most of those, he's been doing most of those things before he came pastor. So we thank God for how things are going right now. So let me ask you this, um, how has your ministry changed since you've, since you've, I guess, left the, the, the pulpit on the regular, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, my ministry now is, I'm getting opportunity now more to, you know, go out and preach other places. I can, you know, young pastors are calling, asking me, you know, questions about things. Some are in building projects. We was able to build and had good success with that. I'm ministering to sharing with other pastors and their you know, their leadership of how we uh, went about things, which was able to do things. And it's, it's, it's a great, my ministry now is, is really a small, like an outreach to other pastors especially younger pastors, because they have not gone through the process of building a site, building and purchasing property and things of that nature. So I'm enjoying doing that, encouraging other you know, pastors and young pastors as well as some older pastors who have not had gone through a building project and things of that nature. 
So I'm, I'm, you know, doing things now that I mean I enjoy doing also. Do you miss the Sundays and Wednesdays at all at the at the podium? Yes. Now that's that's uh, something I miss. Well, let me let me say it this way: the first year. Eric was doing the Bible study, so that I didn't have to prepare for that for that year. Uh, but I miss also getting up, you know, you know, during the week, preparing and meditating on what are we going to be preaching about on Sunday, and also, you know, getting up early on Sunday morning, make sure everything is together. I don't have to do that now, so I miss that, but I'm enjoying it also. Go ahead, I'll I'm just gonna... add something real quick to uh, what Bishop said about what he's doing now. He is certainly serving as a mentor to, to other uh, young pastors. And when I say young, not necessarily young in age. Some are, but then young maybe to the role of pastor. And one of the things that, that I'm thankful for is that he's here as a mentor for me. Uh, I think it would be a shame for him to be mentoring other folks and 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 I need mentoring also in the house, and so I'm thankful that that I am able to to draw upon his wisdom as well. And I'll even share this: one of the things that give me uh, a, a significant degree of encouragement and motivation, uh, in spite of the new weight of responsibility that I have now, is when I can just sort of look over my shoulder. I can look over my shoulder and see the season of his life, see the joy that's in his spirit, the energy that he has, the enthusiasm, the excitement. That's encouragement for me uh, to be able to look, look at dad and see dad is pleased with how things are going, to see he's at a season of his life where I shared with someone recently, he's about as excited as I've, as I've ever seen him and yeah. I've known him for a long time. And so I think that's a, a testament or confirmation that he obeyed God. He heard from God and obeyed God and followed God's voice. And God is allowing him to even experience a level of, of joy and peace in his ministry in this season of his life now. So that's very, very encouraging to me. And when I see his strength, it's almost like, you know, ho hooking your cables up to, mm -hmm. to, to someone else's battery and getting some strength from it. But it's certainly... It certainly motivates. Right. That's, you bring up an interesting topic. How how is how is service? I'll say, I'll just say service, but if you want to say ministry, that's fine too. Is it a different experience now? I guess for both of y'all, is it a different experience? Yes, you know, for me, as I this especially during this past year, I was able to do Eric's preaching and his teaching. I was able, was able to reflect back things that I didn't reckon, didn't really pay much attention to while I was pastoring, it caused, I can now reflect back on things, what God was doing and how God was doing it through his preaching and his teaching from the Bible, experience and examples he teach and preach caused me to reflect back on what God did in those 30 something, was doing in those 30 something years of my life and the ministry. So it's a great experience to be able to sit on Sunday morning and hear the word of God being preached and be able to reflect on what God was doing in this house. Uh, it, it's, it's, it brings that excitement. It, it caused me to be excited about what God is doing. Just like we read it from the Bible, what he did for the Old Testament, how he did it for the apostles in the New Testament. I'm experiencing that, that now. And if I was a writer, I probably could write a book. Yeah. <laughs> but we, I'm enjoying it in that respect and in, uh, in many other ways. And also because of his experience, his knowledge, in administrative work, his ability to teach and to preach, it brings joy to my heart, and my soul, my spirit, and to the church. So I'm, I'm excited about it. He's definitely excited. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, sometimes on Sunday mornings, uh, uh, when you see Bishop get excited, you know that's sort of his nature. He's he get when it comes to the word, he gets excited, and sometimes I think he's getting excited because I'm preaching. I'm doing a good job preaching, but I have to remind myself that's not the case. He gets excited over the word, yeah. period. And I just even remember while he was pastor, and one of the things I admire about him is he's always had an appetite and had an excitement for the word, regardless of who was speaking or presenting it. 
In fact, he can sit in a Bible study that's being taught under the anointing and just literally squirm in his seat because he's just so excited about the Word of God. And so I've always respected that. So I have to remind myself, too, when I see him getting excited on Sunday, that it's because of his love for the so Word, not necessarily because more, I'm doing yeah. such a good job. Yeah. But the Sunday, you asked about the flow, it's, it's certainly a t- totally different perspective. Um, you know, prior to me becoming pastor as assistant pastor, part of my responsibility was to to sort of look out and to to observe and to make sure his job was as easy as possible. And so that required looking at ministry through a different lens. And so uh, to be honest with you, I do miss that as well because it's, it's actually easier. <laughs> it's actually easier being assistant than it is being senior pastor. Uh, but I am so grateful to God and I feel, I, I mentioned before feeling the, the weight of responsibility, but I also feel the grace that, that God gives, that only God can give with this assignment. The grace that comes with the assignment is amazing. So although the responsibility weight is there, you do it with joy and you're not weary because of the grace that God has placed on my life and on this role and assignment that he's given me for this season. So it's a different perspective, but I thank God uh, that God is certainly moving. He's sending his word and the people of God are are receiving the word of God and growing as a result. And that's 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 the goal. Hey, you, you led right into the next question that I was going to ask you, which is the 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 change for you, I know we talked about how, I just asked you about how viewing Sunday service, but just overall, um, what are some of the things about being a senior pastor that you, you only really feel it with experience? The scripture talks about the, the role of the senior pastor uh, as being one of a, a shepherd that feeds the flock. So a responsibility is to feed the flock, but it's also to watch for souls. Um, and when you look at the responsibility factor, it, I don't know if I can adequately put it in words. It's certainly a different perspective. One of the ways I like to describe it um, to those that ask is it's almost like if you're riding in a, in a car and if, if I'm riding in the passenger seat and I'm riding, as we used to say, riding shotgun and just say if Bishop's driving, then my job is to make sure He's good. Make sure, you know, if he needs something to drink, if he gets thirsty, then I'll make sure there's some water in the, in the, in the, uh, in the cup holder. Put the bottle of water there. Make sure I open it for him so he's convenient. I may say, okay, Bishop, you know, it looks like somebody's slamming on their brakes up there. You may want to slow down. Or there's a turn coming if I'm watching the navigation system for him. Helping him drive. But then when you assume the driver's seat when you sit in the driver's seat and when you put your hands on the wheel it's a different perspective with that driver's seat and with that that uh, transition of putting your hands on the wheel you are assuming responsibility for the lives of those passengers in that vehicle and so you cannot take that lightly you cannot take it lightly and sometimes I even wonder you know, I remember, you know, when, when, when you teach your kids how to drive, although they're in the driver's seat and they're assuming responsibility, the parent that's teaching them how to drive may be a nervous wreck and may be watching and say, I hope don't you mess up or don't go too fast or slow down. So sometimes I, 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 hope, that, I hope that I don't make Bishop too nervous sitting in the, in the other seat as, as we're learning how to navigate through this. But the responsibility factor, when you put your hands on the wheel, you're responsible for, for lives. And I know that the word of God is not only precious, but it's powerful, so powerful that people literally take what we share yes. and make decisions concerning the direction of their lives. And I'll tell you, that is not something to take lightly. That is an awesome responsibility that I don't take lightly or take for granted. Um, but it is, a, it is absolutely a difference when you talk about what didn't I see coming or didn't, I didn't know how that really felt from that capacity. From, 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 where, you, from where you sit now, viewing things over the last year and a half, 
Mm-hmm. Um, how's he been driving? You know, I, I mean, and, and, and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of operational changes. There's been a lot of you know administrative changes. Um, I mean, the list there's a list of them. And, he, yes, and I, he uh, you know with Eric, he makes decisions, but I like what he does. He comes and we talk. Communication is is very important. And he can, he communicates with his, some of his ideas, his visions, and we talk about it, share it, and I feel good about what he's sharing. But I always tell him, you know, the final decision is yours. But I can, you know, I can, I, I agree with what you're saying, and it makes it makes the whole transition of from one say, see, I've been district elder, been bishop, set on boards, and the thing that I like about what is happening here with us is. God was able to, you know, give me some insight in what a transition should be, and I've seen what it shouldn't be. So I always, I look at the negative, what I've experienced in past, not from here, but other, you know, being involved in ministry on the National Board of Bishops and things of that nature, and I hear some of the horror stories about how the transition didn't go, or it should have gone, but it didn't go. And I I'm very conscious of that. When I even give a, he asked me for advice, I want to get his feeling on, I don't just tell, being a, my role here now is pastor emerges and also slash overseer, but I don't want to be the one that is overlooking him and telling him you ought not to, you should not, this is what I think you ought to do. I listen to what he has to say, and, and majority of the time is exactly what I'm thinking. So it's, it's, it's very comfortable in the way things are going, for me, where the way things are going, because my desire is to see more churches have smoother transitions in the ministry. Because I've heard, you know, I've seen, heard of, and witnessed some horrible transitions. But God has blessed us here, and I hope and pray not to exalt myself or to exalt Him, but that we can. Uh, others may, you know, observe and see how transition should go, without membership fighting or in, in, you know, infighting and things of that nature. So I'm, I'm excited about the way things are going, the way he's handled himself. Where he's, he's very open. Eric is very open about his, his vision and his plans, and we talk about them, talk over, talk about them, and he gets, uh, he gets my nod. To go forward because that's what, it's, that's what our desire here, not because, not just for me when I was pastor, but I still have that same desire to see the ministry progress and move forward. Yeah. You, you, you hinted on my next thing that I was so, getting into, okay. vision. Um, yeah. okay. y'all, y'all have talked amongst each other about the vision. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's, well not I'm sure, I've heard the, the bits and pieces of both of y'all's visions throughout the time here and so has the, so the congregation. What is the vision for the future of doing life together um, from the emeritus perspective? What are, what are some of the things that God has shown you? Um, just kind of being able to step back and, and, and really see from a bird's eye view, so to speak. And then as well for you, kind of as being the shepherd of the flock now. Sure. Yeah, well, I look, I, I, you know, I look at it this way. You see, God, several years ago, and I shared with the congregation, the Lord spoke to me to continue to build a foundation for a wealthy church. When God speak in my spirit, I just don't take it literally saying we're going to have a lot of this and a lot of that. But the foundation of a wealthy church is to be really rooted and grounded in the foundation of the word. And that, and to see where things are, where things are going now, when he came with his vision about doing life together, that I means we are ready to build. Not a new edifice, but to build the, the, the ministry, the congregation, the people, reaching out to both and him being much younger, he can, he can articulate and can reach younger people, you know, uh, more so than I have a great heart for younger people. But he has the skills, the talent, and the ability in this uh, modern time we are living through now, with this, the culture of life now. Fits, his, fits right in with the, his lifestyle and his ministry and his, 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 you know, his teaching and his preaching. So that makes, makes it real good. 
where do you see where do you see things going? Uh, you, well, where? I think you know, going. Oh, I see this church growing. I see people coming, more people coming in. The ministry growing. Things are being more things are being developed with the ministry. Oh, my vision, uh, his vision, and my vision are just so connected that uh, I'm just excited about it. Yeah, I see the church growing. I see a revival. I see it as a time of revival, like it was when my wife and I, we, back in 1978, 77, 78, there was a great revival move in our, in our day and time. It brought us, we was going to church, but we really wasn't into church like we should have been. And I see that, I can envision, envision that same revival taking place here, not only in this church, but throughout the community. A new revival, God-ordained revival, not a fundraiser, but a revival that to touch people's lives, young and old. So that's where I see the ministry going. And I'm excited about it. I'm just waiting. I, I hear a pastor always say, what's next? What Lord's going to do next? <laughs> I, I want to sort of back into this, this, this question vision-wise, because there's a couple of things that Bishop said a moment ago that I, wanna, that I think is worth um, elaborating on. One is... He, he and I have been connected spiritually for years. Yes, yes. Um, there will be so many times when I may have an idea or something may come in my spirit and I mention it to him and it's consistent with what was already in his spirit. Yes. Or vice versa. He may say, hey, you know, here's something we're going to be doing because God placed it in his spirit and it's consistent with what some things God had already been dealing with. So, we, we, so we've sort of joked about it over the years that it's just amazing how God has synchronized that. But I also want to, to mention also that you know, he is my pastor. Although I am the senior pastor of the church, he's my pastor. And I think that's important that everyone needs a covering. Yes. The, 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 the funny part about it that I don't think we've quite really figured it out yet is he also refers to me as his pastor because he's still a member of this church and now I'm senior pastor. So it, we're sort of trying to figure out how that really works. But, but uh, I thank God for it that there's no struggle, there's no conflict. Uh, when something comes up in the ministry, whether it be, um, we've had a few funerals since I've taken over. And when we've talked with the family, just because he's been pastor for so long and we've had to funeralize some long standing members, um, and we've always talked with the family, what do you want? Mm -hmm. We're here to serve. If, if you want me to do the service, Bishop is okay with that. If you want Bishop to do the service, I'm okay with that. And so we've worked well together, and I thank God that we continue uh, to do that. Um, so him as my pastor, when, when, when God gives direction, you know, yes, I'll come and bounce some things off of him um, because I've, I've always done that. Mm -hmm. And he's always been my pastor and still is, and I thank God for that. Now, as it pertains to the vision, wow, uh, God is really literally blowing our minds in terms of what he's already doing with the vision. And I'll just even say for this year, living by faith, uh, the way our membership have, have embraced this vision or the theme even for this year, not only have they embraced it overwhelmingly, but seeing God work. We rolled this out in January and there are already testimonies, amazing testimonies, some of which we haven't even shared publicly with the congregation yet. Amazing testimonies of what God has already done in the first month. And we see how our membership has embraced even our, our consecration month in January. Wow. Um, just seeing what God has done this year without any, uh, you know, f force, you know, trying to force anybody to do anything, but just, just challenging people to trust God and to walk and live by faith. God has done some amazing things. What I see where we're headed is we are going to build lives. We don't, we're not aggressively pursuing building buildings. We're, there are some renovations that we have in mind, uh, some small scale renovations, 
but we are concerned with building lives. When you talk about doing life together, that is not just a slogan. That's a culture for this ministry that we're going to build. We're going to connect. We're going to equip. We're going to serve. I believe that God has placed us here to impact this world. And I'm committed to make the proper investments in our community, the yeah. proper investments in our church administratively, mm -hmm. um, investments even in technology. Because I'll tell you, uh, if you study statistics and if you just look at where the landscape of the church world now, mm -hmm. COVID has disrupted what was our norm. And all experts and the data mm -hmm. says that we will not go back to how mm -hmm. things were before. So for anybody waiting on things to get back to how it was before, you, you might be waiting for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so what God has in, placed in my heart is to invest in where we're headed, invest in the future, invest in technology, because there are people that may never enter our building that God wants us to reach. And so it's not about building membership or building the membership of Bible Way Sumter, mm -hmm. but it's about building and advancing the kingdom. And if we're gonna do that, we have to go where people are. And technology is the vehicle nowadays to do that. People literally are living by technology. I remember Bishop preaching in one of his message years ago he said we were going to be a slave. We were going to become slaves to technology. And I think we, we, we've been there for a while, I think. But the good side of that is that technology can be used in a powerful way to advance the kingdom. If we're going to reach someone, we have to go where they are. And so that's one of my commitments to do that, to build lives, to reach people where they are. But then not only having the technology, but we have to keep, we have to stay firm in the faith and stay true to the faith. We can't water down the truth. And so our commitment is not only to utilize the vehicles to get to people, but to make sure the message is pure, the message is solid. And so we wanna, we wanna share Christ. We want to help people um, develop their relationships with God, to connect with Christ, and to strengthen their relationships with Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Regardless of what denomination you may be, mm -hmm. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the Savior of the world. And that's the message we have to communicate to the world. Regardless of what name hangs on your church building, what banner, organizational banner you may be associated with, our vision is is to communicate Christ to this world. And we're gonna do that by the help of the Lord. I got one more question. Um, and, and this is something I was thinking about when I was on the drive in today. Uh, you know, Wednesdays throughout the, throughout the pandemic, it's when everybody kind of had the time to drop off their offering. Uh, you know, and I, to my knowledge for a, for a good period of time, that was, both of y'all came up here for that, correct? Mm -hmm. um, how has y'all's relationship either, um, you know, evolved or, or just just tell me about how that is for y'all now? And I, I, I'm interested to, to hear that. Yeah, let me, let me start that one if I can. I'll start it. I'll tell you, and I've shared this with people. Our Wednesdays here at the church um, started during COVID when we shut down we used the in-person giving as an option for people to come by the church certain times, but also we used that as time to, to also make sure we were doing some administrative things that was necessary. The times that we, and we have consistently done that pretty much all throughout the pandemic. So even, and interestingly, this started in his last year as pastor. Mm -hmm. So the year 2020, was his last year as senior pastor, and it was sort of a, a heartbreak to me. I was like, well, I hate to see Bishop go out like this where the last year of his ministry, we're shut down for most of the year. But the time that we had up here, there were times when we would, we would talk about a lot of things. Yeah. 
there were some times when we didn't have a whole lot to talk about. Maybe we were just sort of reviewing some things, but those were, to me, precious times because we had time to really just to share what was in each other's heart. Mm -hmm. And we, I think, our, from a relationship standpoint, I think it was just a consistent time for us to connect even on another level. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I think it was more precious to me than it was to him, but just having that time, I looked forward to it and I still look forward to it. We're still doing that even to this day on Wednesdays mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock. I have it blocked off on my calendar. Uh, I'm here unless there's something extenuating that comes up. We're here on Wednesdays uh, and we're able to spend that time together to talk about different things of the ministry, uh, to share concerns, uh, to share hopes um, and things that we see. So it is an absolute precious time. And I, I feel like it's, it's brought us even closer and, and has strengthened our bond. He said, but, 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 but everything I was going to say, praise God, because it's truly been a, it's been a real blessing to have the opportunity just to come here, like on that, on that, especially on that day, that Wednesday, you know, to, to receive what the people have to bring. But it was more than that. It was an opportunity to him, you know, we talk about the vision and we talk about different things, the growth of the ministry. And I find myself, some of the things, Joyce, my wife, and I was talk, we'll talk about, you know, at home. He comes talking about it here on, on the day we were together. And I, it's, just, it's just a joy to know that how the Lord, is, you know, is, is ministering to me as for, well now as the former pastor and, and to him as the, as, as the pastor, you know, he's, um, today. So it's it was it's 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 something. It's just a an excitement that grows, and I can go back to the house and say, well, you know, we talk about the same thing. Eric was talking about some of the same thing we was you know thinking about. So that it was just I don't know. It's 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 hard to explain. It's hard to explain. He, he, God is so awesome. You can't you know you just hard to explain how he works things out and how he causes things to happen, because we have the same spirit. And the spirit is, you know, he spe it spe speaks truth to the heart. Yeah. If, your, if our hearts are right, is toward people, you know, God's people, not say God's people, but toward people in general, transitioning and transforming lives and doing life together. That, 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 that theme is right there itself just brought so much comfort and so much joy for us to come and just talk about it, the possibilities the possibilities of what God can do. And, you know, he can do exceedingly abundant above all we can imagine or think. But just to know that he is working like that, I'll tell you, it brings joy. Yeah. It brings joy. Sometimes I feel I leave here and I go, go back to the house on those winds and feel like I had, we've had church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just say this, too, just to piggyback on that with Wednesdays. I, when we first started it, uh, when the pandemic first hit, it was really interesting because we were we were figuring a lot of things out. We did not live stream our services before then. So because we were in a season where we had to shut down our in-person worship, if you're not live streaming, you shut down in person, you shut down. So we had to literally figure some things out and we talked a lot in those initial days, okay, how are we going to do this? And, and we had to we had to sort of stretch in, in ways that we hadn't before. And just, I think that was so much of a blessing that we were able to just sort of put our heads together and, and bounce different ideas and, and brainstorm on how we can still deliver the word yes. to the congregation and stay connected with the congregation, even though we had been hit. I mean, the world, as you mentioned before, had literally been hit by this pandemic. And so that was a blessing as well. I do want to say one one thing also regarding transitions. Mm -hmm. I, I think we were fortunate that Bishop was was sensitive to God when the timing came, when the time was right. I also think that we also um, had we had a good example yes. in that of uh, I refer to. To, uh, to our mother church. Uh, we refer to Bible Way Church of Atlas Road as our mother church. It's the church that, that Bishop and his family uh, came out of when they came to Sumter uh, to assume the pastorate here. Yes. But Bishop A.C. Jackson, the late Bishop A.C. Jackson, mm -hmm. 
I think he wrote the playbook on how it should be. We've all heard, heard stories about how it's gone wrong, how transitions has resulted in churches literally splitting. Bishop Jackson had enough foresight and insight that he was determined to do it the right way. I remember speaking with him on one occasion and he said that it's a shame if you have the torch in your hand yes. and you refuse to let it go and pass it on, but you would rather die with the torch in your hand than pass it on. And he said he wasn't gonna do that. And he, through God's leading, uh, put together a transition plan for he and now senior pastor Daryl Jackson and I'll tell you that was, I describe it as a textbook perfect transition. And I'd like to think that we learned some lessons from that. And I think that certainly uh, how they did it and did it well impacted how we did it here as well. And so I am very proud of how we went about it. And I think we've done some things that other churches can model as well. Listen, um, I'll just say from a, from a point of personal preference, being a, being a fly on the wall throughout this process, being able to um, be a part of it as a third generation, as your grandson, as your son, as a member of this church, mm -hmm. uh, it has been a joy to watch. The revival is something that you can feel in the air. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's excited. Everybody mm -hmm. is looking forward to what the future holds, what doing life together produces mm -hmm. through living by faith. Right. I'm super proud. I want to give you y'all flowers while y'all can smell them. Tell you that I appreciate y'all. The ministry appreciates y'all. But most of all, I feel like God appreciates y'all. So yeah. thank you. We're good. We thank God. We thank God. We're good. Yeah.